Hey everyone, uh, I'm sitting next to myself uh, and you. That's a we. You're watching this. I'm recording this. That counts as a we. We're gonna we're gonna run with that. It makes me feel less lonely about recording this quick look of Valkyria Chronicles, support of the PS3 and I guess also PSP cult strategy game, uh, in which if you're familiar with XCOM, if you're familiar with Fire Emblem. And uh, I guess by, hold on, quick aside. So they obviously they ported this to PC, but you know it came from a Sony platform originally. And just how amazing is it that they just recreated the cross media bar when you go to save? It's 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 pretty fantastic. It's pretty great. Uh, so like I was saying, if if you've played modern XCOM, you know Enemy Unknown, Enemy Within, Enemy with Enemy Within. Uh, you know, Fire Emblem, you know, I'm not going to pretend to be some sort of strategy game savant, but if you've been following my work uh, recently, then you're uh, aware that I, I've i kind of gotten into the genre, starting with XCOM, then getting into Fire Emblem, uh, and then uh, being excited for Valkyria Chronicles. People were constantly telling me, hey, Patrick, if you enjoy Valkyria Chronicles, then you're going to, or, you know, if you enjoy these other games, then you're going to really get into Valkyria Chronicles. So, you know, if you're not aware, obviously this came out on the PS3. Uh, and then there is a petition uh, to get it released onto the PC, but you know there are there are petitions all the time uh, to get games released onto different platforms, and that doesn't always happen. But in this case, I will just uh, flip this onto onto easy, just so I can show off how it all works. Um, so you can seem to pay attention to it, or at least maybe we provided a tipping point, or who knows. But in, in any case, you know, Cure Chronicles is now out on PC uh, on Steam. Uh, and it's a pretty fantastic port. Uh, I you know, uh, highly recommend you check out the PC Gamer analysis of how it actually functions as a PC port. But uh, the, by all accounts, it has the things that you want. You know, if you're familiar with Durante, who helped make things like the Dark Souls PC port and Deadly Premonition and other ports become like good and serviceable for folks on the PC that have you know, certain needs and desires for customiz customizability when it comes to resolution and frame rate, blah, blah, blah. Durante did an analysis over PC Gamer, and he said, hey, this one passes the sniff test. So, if Durante thinks it's okay, it's probably, it's probably okay. So anyway, I've jumped into a skirmish here. Skirmishes are these different types of battles that come up as you progress through the story that allow you to basically grind for XP. You know, they kind of portray it as, hey, you can, uh, you know, figure out how new units work. And I, that's what I have primarily used it for, to be honest, because I'm, you know, only two, three hours into the game. Uh, so it's like, hey, you go from just having one type of enemy or, or one type of uh, character to having a bunch of different types, and I don't know how they all work. So, for example, I've got a scout shock trooper. So a scout is basically exactly what he says. He can move a lot. He has a lot of AP. Uh, he uh, can then, like, you can go out, see where the enemies are, run back. Uh, he can be killed pretty, pretty easily, but, you know, you can kind of... Scouts are kind of expendable, because you're not going to really be using them to take out the enemy. Uh, shock Troopers are your basic kind of all-around soldier. They're pretty powerful, have a bunch of armor. Uh, lancers uh, can be used to take out soldiers, but they don't have a lot of ammunition, so primarily they are used as anti-tank uh, sort of characters, which is not going to come up in this mission, but we'll jump into a a story mission where it'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, engineers. Engineers are used to uh, heal your units. Uh, they can build barricades, I think, but I haven't gotten far enough for them to have that that feature yet, but like you could like build cover for your units as they were maybe, like moving forward in the front. Uh, and they can also repair your tank uh, and heal units. I think I said that. Uh, and snipers are... Yo, they're snipers. So, okay. So, you, uh, you know, you don't get to choose where your units are, although there are missions where you have uh, various options. Uh, but you do have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight spots. The tank is on default. Welkin is your sort of main character. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and plunk in two scouts. Oh, uh, I can plunk, you know, plunk down a total of nine, although I only get to choose between eight. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna load up on shock troopers. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the the Lancers, because I just don't really... Well, whatever. I'll use one. And then we'll bring an Engineer, and we'll bring a uh, Sniper. So, I've got my uh, nine sort of sorted. 
come back out, uh, look at your objectives. Uh, basically, at least early in the game, a lot of the objectives seem to be, hey, if Welkin dies, who's the main character, uh, that's that. Then you screwed it up. Uh, there's also this idea that if 20 turns pass, but I, I have the first couple missions have not gone longer than three turns or four turns. Uh, I'm sure that changes a lot as you go forward, and maybe that failure state changes uh, as well. So let's go ahead and deploy, and I'll show you exactly kind of how the operation. game actually functions. Let's drive these Imperials back out of Gallia. Squad 7, move out! So one of the things that is noticeable about the PC port is... So the real-time stuff and the menus all look friggin' amazing, but I'll pull up a cutscene later. The cutscenes are pulled straight from the PS3 version, so they can't run at a resolution higher than what they were originally rendered at to be put on that, that Blu-ray disc. So they look a little fuzzy, but they're, they're serviceable. Uh, so let's, we'll start out... My turn, okay? uh, you know, most battles start out with you grabbing a, a scout. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of guys. So I, I don't really need to move forward with this scout. Um, I'm mostly going to get myself into trouble if I try to go any further. So uh, you go into a targeting mode, in which you can kind of click between all the enemies. Because the scout can see so far. I mean, I can technically aim at that person all the way at the base, but hey, that seems like a that seems like a dumb move. Uh, so, let's see, I'll... Oh, one thing I can do, crouch, which uh, gives me, you know, like, increased uh, protection from, from an enemy. I don't think I'm gonna be able to hit this guy. I can't zoom. I have a grenade. I don't think my, my grenade's gonna make it out far enough to make an impact. Uh, Ragnade is, you use that to heal. Dudes, you can kind of, like, turn around. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Boom, I can heal someone. But we'll, we'll just take a pot shot. It doesn't work out. That's eh, fine. Uh, da -da. Try and line it up. Hey, got a couple shots in. All right, so we'll... They can still move, so I can get up and... Whee. See, their AP is going down at the bottom. Uh, but I, I don't have any use for, for them anymore. This, the scout has served its function. This is a small enough map that you could, you could realistically come in here with no scouts. Uh, and it'd be just fine. Let's go ahead and grab our sniper. Move him up a little bit. Uh, not quite in a firing range. One weird thing. So I'm using a controller, so I can play it on a TV, but you can use a mouse and keyboard. Um, you have to aim with the left stick. So, which is just like, you're just used to aiming with the right stick, but you use that to zoom in, but you aim with the left stick. It's a lot. So you actually can target different body types. I'm not sure if it's going to really show up on that enemy. Let's see if I can find one where it's actually different. So I aim at this guy's head. If it connects, one shot to kill. If I aim at his body, uh, three shots to kill. But I only get one shot. Um, so uh, this is a shock trooper. He's He can, he can kind of wreck my dudes a little bit. So why don't I just go ahead and try and take him out right up front. So it, it does matter where you shoot. It's okay. I took him out with one shot. He's going to be psyched about that. Get. Way to go, Cesare. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of AP and not a lot of health, so I'm just going to have him hang out. And now I'm just going to be a dick. I, I said this on easy, which is go. slightly ridiculous. So now I've got this tank, uh, which doesn't have a lot of movement, uh, but also can take just a ridiculous amount of damage. Uh, but you'll see there's a, there's a Lancer out there. Uh, but... I've got the shock trooper right over there. I'm gonna... Whoop. So I think that means that it connects if it if it hits in the orange. So I'll do that. And not only so, so the <laughs> he tumbles out and then magically comes back on. Uh, and then I've taken out his cover, right? So that's one of the the elements that you you play with as you as you work through the game, uh, the, the different missions is. Is, is making sure that you're actually managing the cover of yourself and the enemies, because if they're exposed, uh, they don't have an equivalent of Overwatch, to, to you know, to borrow a term from uh, XCOM. Uh, you know, in Overwatch, Overwatch in XCOM uh, is this Roger. sense that when you find an... Uh, if you don't want to have an enemy make a, an explicit move, you can have them just kind of sit there... And they'll take pot shots as enemies as they, as they come through. Um, but if you do set up your your guys, uh, they will take shots at enemies as they go through. It's kind of like a Overwatch default, 
uh, in this game. So that guy's pretty far, so I'm not probably not gonna be able to do too much to him. But we'll see. Yeah, see, the, so my guy's pretty dangerous up front, but the, the Lancers have a decent amount of armor, and so that's just not gonna be that useful. So you're using uh, at the top you see CP. CP is basically like your collective action points. So there's action points on a per character level, and then there are action points for your team, uh, and you can distribute them however you like uh, to. To use the tank, it takes two. But I can use the tank as many Entering times as I combat. want. So if I just want to jump into this tank again, just kind of plow my way through. Gotta love nature. So potential or like abilities that are unlocked as you play through the game. Give it all, you've got, soldiers. all right, so... So anti... I think anti-armor is what I want to use on this guy. So we'll go ahead and line that up. Yeah, so that took out a decent chunk of them. He got knocked off. Doesn't seem to actually do any additional damage to him. Uh, so he'll be able to do quite a bit to me. But what I've also done... I think I have one more movement point. So let's take... One of my other... Uh, well, let's take that sniper. You say so. Well, this is... Okay. What I wanted to demonstrate was the fact that with the tank, you've essentially set yourself up with a piece of cover. You can't hide behind it in, in the way that I am right now. Aw, oh, you son of a... I've got this hair on my microphone that keeps going into my eye, but I, I can only see it when I talk into the microphone, and it's, it's driving me nuts. So once you've used all your all your points, then it switches over to the the enemy phase, you know, as you would imagine in one of these games, and then they get to do whatever they want. So they're going to take some shots at me, and um, you know, for this skirmish, you're just trying to get to the other side of the map and uh, capture their territory. So you actually don't need to kill everyone. In fact, if we kind of futz around here, take out a couple of the guys, I, I can basically make a sprint for their their base and, and end this pretty quickly, uh, which will allow us to jump into an actual an actual mission uh, that, that shows a little bit more of the dynamic elements. Uh, see, if there's my tank. Uh, so I, you know, one of the things I was a little <laughs> wary about when I loaded this game up was uh, it's got a lot of, it's got some anime stylings, let's say. And I, I got nothing intrinsically against the anime. You know, it's... Hey man, like what you want to like. Uh, but I don't, I don't know, I just... It's, it's not usually my thing, I guess is what I'll say. So that takes out the Shock Trooper, who's basically the most deadly enemy on this, on this battlefield. I don't think... He can also run that over. So you can take out cover that way. Like, your tank is extremely useful, but if he gets surrounded by, say, a couple of those Lancers, you know, you're not... You're not gonna survive very long with that tank. Um, so the, the tank is something that can be easily over-relied upon, um, where, you, where you think that's what's gonna allow you to win every single battle, and, and that's just not the case. But taking advantage of it is certainly a smart idea. All right, so I think actually with that, I can probably just end this if I grab my scout. Uh, the scouts can just run tremendous distances. I understand. And because I can apply as many points to them as I want, uh, even when they run out of action points up here, uh, I'm still going to be able to. After me. So let's see if I can take him out, get up real close. So that's not gonna work. He's gonna get a couple shots at me. That was maybe not the smartest move. How's their manpower now? Okay. So end the current action. And then I'll go ahead and apply him another movement point. He's still got half his health, but she's got half her health, so we're probably okay here. Oh, I need to actually kill this guy in order to shoot. Hmm. All right. 
This, this may not have gone as smoothly as I was hoping. Okay, ah, okay, no, we're actually good. Yes. Thanks, buddy. No, oh, that is a he. Man. Confusing gender roles here in the Valkyria Chronicles. So you can just keep applying the points, like, if you've got... One guy, so I'll go ahead and occupy that, and that should bring us to the end of the mission. So basically, if you if you get along to missions in which Operation complete. We took their ba you know you're you're up against enemies that are just kind of wrecking you, uh, you can come back here, uh, grind uh, for more experience points, which then are applied in this thing called tabs back on the headquarters. It's, it's kind of where you manage your your staff and your upgrades, and it's it's different. So one thing's I'm not sure how I feel about it. So you do have this thing called the War Cemetery, in which uh, I actually actually haven't looked at this before because I haven't I don't think I've had anyone die yet. Paying your respects. Oh God. Sorry. I suppose that was a foolish question. Uh, that is sorry. You, uh, please excuse your creepy voice. Actually, no, sir. Oh, then might I ask? <laughs> I need to get away from this aged gentleman as soon as possible. Seeing this much death, don't suppose I've ever. Yes, sir, Lieutenant Welkin Gunther. I'm in charge of Squad Seven, Regiment Three. Gunther, I see. I see. <laughs> Not at all, sir. Not at all. It's, it's ruining this like touching moment in which they're talking about war. But I'm sorry, his voice is. Is freaking me out. An order? <laughs> I can't. Sorry, I'm just gonna use it to command an engine. Oh, jeez. To pull out of combat. Well, it costs 6,500 XP in order to learn a tree. I don't have that much. Nice. I hope we'll meet again. So basically, when an, uh, an enemy goes down, I guess uh, you can have them retreat instead. So anyway, your uh, soldiers are not particularly unique. Uh, they all level up sort of equally as you pay for leveling up. So if you go into the training field, that's where you can apply your experience points. You have experience points and this other currency what? that you spend. Um, Trade all you want. I've got all I, this guy's pretty good, drill instructor. He doesn't need a real name. So, you know, you spend uh, your experience points here to, to level up uh, your various guys. I, I tend to, in these games, quickly level up the shock trooper, you know, like soldier equivalent, and the sniper. Uh, I like hanging back and just sort of picking folks off. That just tends to be... I paired big, burly soldiers uh, who can take a lot of damage with snipers that can support them from the outside. So, that, I'm, you know, I'm, that's probably how I'm going to test out my strategy in Valkyrie Chronicles, and we'll see if that actually holds up, you know, as as I get deeper into the game. Um, you know, you have all your all your characters, and you know they have these uh, little like personality traits. So you know, whenever a close friend is nearby, they can't have a chit chat distraction that lowers their accuracy. So like you know, if they have something like that, you might not want to pair them with a character that they like or, or have talked with. So while there are sort of individual quirks about them. By and large, the characters are sort of homogenous and mostly exist as different class setups. So you don't have to feel that bad when you lose a character. Anyone important is appears to be just a failure state for the mission. So you don't actually need to be concerned with losing them because if you lose them, then the mission will be over. Maybe that changes as the game goes on, but you know it's different from... Fire Emblem, in which every character is this main character that can die at any time, and the story keeps going no matter what. Uh, and then in XCOM, where uh, there is no main character, and you're recruiting all these different uh, soldiers, but you get to attach them because not only do they become very powerful because you've gotten them through a bunch of missions, but uh, in addition to that, uh, you just you you come to know them. Like you know, Roscoe, man, you've been on you've been here for 15 hours, and then if he dies, I, a you may have lost you know your your best sniper. And then you've also lost, like, your buddy Roscoe, who has been there through Thick and Finn and seen all these invasions, so... I miss that a little bit in Valkyrie Chronicles, where there's just a bit more of a churn when it comes to your soldiers. Uh, you know, there's just... There's not a whole lot of what makes them 
unique necessarily. They try and give him character traits, but and maybe I'll get attached to them. I don't know. That's uh, I guess it's too early for me to make that judgment call. But you know, here's where you spend your DCT. Like this is just your currency that you use to upgrade items. You can also upgrade your tank, the Edelweiss. Um, this certainly is probably what costs the most, and you have the most options there. Uh, and then you, when you do that, uh, you actually kind of have to pick your your options on what you want to outfit it with, so you can kind of dump these into a little grid. Come back again soon, bro. I mean it, man. See you, Leon. Leon Kennedy. I see, I'll just like I just want to pretend that you are Leon. Alright, so go back to book mode, which is yeah, how you choose you know, your story stuff. And uh, we'll jump into a mission that I've already finished. Uh, so these are different pages. Kind of sets up the story. I can show you what one of the... You know, what, what the cutscenes look like. This is the prologue. Something that doesn't really spoil anything if people are sensitive to that. I'm not particularly attached to the story yet, but hey. Other people might be, so... You know, due to March, compression of the video, you know, obviously it, all, it looks a little bit muddier than how the game Boone. looks native when you're looking at it on your PC. But you can kind of tell that, that the assets are not nearly as high resolution as, as what you see in the actual game. Like, I don't think it's all Resident that bothersome, but it's one of those things that you hope going forward, game developers are a little more mindful of. Maybe it will fix itself because lots of stuff is rendered in 1080p or 720p natively, where the assets are, are generated in such a way. But, you know, this is a circumstance where they never imagined having to output these cutscenes in anything but the, the resolution that the PS3 was capable of. So they didn't save all this. You know, it's, it's not as simple as just going into, you know, Adobe Premiere and exporting a new one. This there just appears to have just been stuck with it. Or it's also possible they made that decision of a trade-off to say, hey, there's only so much we can do for this port. One of the things we're not going to do is re-render the cutscenes. Uh, and I think it's a pretty reasonable compromise. I, I think the rest of the game uh, looks pretty spectacular. But, oh, I can't shoot. Okay. I can't replay an old mission. All right, well, we're going to have to do... I guess we're gonna have to do uh, another mission. I'm gonna not make us watch these. Well, we'll watch Squad a little bit of a cutscene. Give you give you a flavor of what we're Gave looking at. Foothold we needed. Now we'll join the army's vassal battalion in Operation Cloudburst to take back the bridge. Militia forces will take the point, crossing the bridge, and attacking the eastern camp. Captain. Crossing that bridge means breaching the enemy bridgehead. What sort of on-site backup and supplies can we expect from the army on this? The plan calls for the army to commence its operation after we've struck the bridgehead. Wait a minute. So we're just being offered up on a platter? I know how you feel. I felt that way when I was a militia foot soldier too. <sighs> like that she closes her eyes. She's having a traumatic flashback. But sometimes being a soldier means. Okay, all right, blah blah blah. Breaching that bridgehead, Captain Barat. Um. Well Welcome. Melchiot. Oh, uh, we're finished. I haven't gotten particularly attached to the characters yet. Now, I I'm, I'm not sure how people feel about the visit. story of Valkyria Chronicles. Was, the story was not yes, necessarily yeah. what people came to me about. It's it's not the reason someone at a I mean, at PAX gave me a copy of Valkyria Chronicles on PS3. I, I I know that folks just really like the way the combat works. Cause it, it's a nice nice mixture between giving the player a feeling of being on that battlefield, controlling units, without requiring the twitchy action, you know, left trigger right trigger required in a in a Call of Duty. So it's it's. It's very different in those respects, but it allows I don't know. it allows you to feel like you're just, just more part of the battle. Right, I'm just gonna skip all this. I'd, I'll watch this later. Uh, so it splits up the story stuff into all these little chapters, and I'm sure everyone is very angry at each other. Some episodes listen to the book loader, marked with an asterisk. These are sub episodes, often telling a side story tangential to the main plot. For that reason, it's not necessary to view them in order to advance the game. There's no penalty. Yep. Nope. Let's go ahead and do that. So we 
can skip ahead to whatever this mission is. Skip, 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 skip. Skip, 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 skip. Man, there's so much going on in the story right now. Alright, so it looks like this is the next mission. So, at least this should give us a sense of... Or give you a sense. Give all of us a sense. Let uh, me brief you on operation. How an actual mission plays out, which are a little more intense than that little skirmish that we were screwing around with before. Powerful pair of advantages going for you now. One, you're behind them. Two, they don't know you're there. Strike them hard and fast to make best use of that edge. Your objective is to occupy the enemy's base camp located at the mouth of the bridge. It's possible the enemy will detect your approach as time goes by. Once they do, kind of them climb for backup. Get to that camp fast. You want this to end pretty, Lieutenant. Many enemy tanks are stationed in this area, but some still have their engines shut down, meaning they won't attack you. Any inactive tanks whose radiators aren't glowing and whose cannons aren't in position can be ignored completely. Also, it looks like they got tanks. They have extra ragnite, fuel sitting around throughout the area. A gunshot should be able to destroy those and hopefully take out any nearby tanks or foot soldiers with it. That's like the game's equivalent of barrels to shoot. So in this case, there are two base camps, and you can occupy that one and use that as a like a, a rally point. It also means, I think when your base camps, your ammunition gets uh, reloaded at a much faster pace, and there are some ammunitions, some forms of ammunition that can't be uh, replenished unless you're given to it by an engineer or uh, you're actually in a in a base. So position units. So we're all, I guess we're all starting here. Uh, let's see. So a scout. We're going to want two scouts, because we're probably going to want to split into two parties. Shock trooper. Shock trooper. We're going to have a... Uh... Sounds like we're going to run into some various tanks. So we're also going to want an engineer. And then I think we're going to want a sniper. So that's a pretty balanced team. you got shock troopers to deal with the various uh, ground troops uh, you're going to run into. Uh, and the engineers can also feed ammunition to the lancers. The lancers are really good against the the ground troops because they basically fire like a bazooka. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see how this goes. This this could go poorly. Operation Starting a a new mission in front of everyone is is not usually what you do when you're trying to show Take the game the off the best. But hey, if I screw One, this up, seven, well, it won't be the first time that I've done that on a video. So. Welcome to the club. All right, that's it. You're crazy. You know that, right? Incoming message from Squad One leader Faldio lands it on the West Bank, sir. Enemy company in motion, presumed headed east across. A full company? We'll have to move fast. Listen closely. So it seems like, you know, what their... Every unit possesses a set of innate abilities and has potentials awakened in combat under special side conditions, such as remaining HP, Terran type, and the current turn number of the factors. Squad 7 is made of a broad variety of individuals, each with their own strengths and shortcomings to keep in mind. So, for example, uh, one of the uh, potentials that was unlocked in one of my characters in the last mission was an ability to dodge shots. So when the enemy pulled out their gun... Uh, to shoot at them, they d dive to the floor and got out of the way. So, let's see. So we've got a encampment over here. The main camp is over here. So this is a, this is a fairly this is a big map. This is certainly the biggest one that I have uh, dealt with so far. So I think what I'm going to try and do is you know split into both sides, come at this from two angles. Uh, we'll probably send a scout out first, just to get a sense of. Uh, What's going on here? So, I see an enemy. This lets us enemy know. Spotted. Multiple enemy tank sighted. Okay. Oh wow. Push them back. All right. So now on the map, I I've, have various enemies that have uh, been added. Uh, that gives me a sense of you know, what we're actually dealing with here. Um, you want to, I have found at least, you know, go. in these first two missions, you know, as I've become Valkyrie Chronicles expert, uh, yeah, I want to get my tank rolling early. 
try and get it out there, use it as a form of cover. And then I often bring up my engineer behind it uh, so that the engineer can maintain. Okay, so this is an example where I'm going to try and follow what they were talking about. I shoot that. That takes out a bunch of potential tanks. So we'll end that. Not going to mess with the. You know, I could sit there and rely on the tank. I know I've got a tank up here that I don't have to deal with. So I'm, I don't have anything dealing with my tank yet, so my engineer can kind of hang back for a little bit. I'm going to bring up Let's do a shock trooper. The idea being I'm going to try and get up there. Ready and waiting for your command. This guy. So he's a scout, so he doesn't have too much going on. But I appear to have lined that up improperly, and so now I have... Well, at least I've protected myself, so I guess that could have gone worse. Uh, one thing I can do, I'm going to try and this year, I'm going to bring up my sniper. Uh, so you can't, you know, use the, the tank as cover. But I can. Hostile detected. I can take a shot. Actually, this is probably the smarter one. So I've got this tank. I could take a shot at this scout, but the uh, scout's not going to do too much damage to me. But this tank, he can wreck me. So I should be able to hit this. Which has taken out most of that tank. And then I can run over here, and that guy can no longer shoot me because I'm now using the, the tank as a form of cover. So, you don't actually formally get into cover. There's not like a hit X to get into cover, uh, like there are in some games, but you know, it's, it serves a, a similar function. Alright, so we'll probably bring. Engaging the enemy. Let's get our other shock trooper up here. I'm, a, I'm afraid my scout's gonna get blasted. Which I, I don't want. I don't want him to get blasted. Who wants to get blasted? I'm gonna go ahead and use another action point on him. There are also opportunities to, uh, like, primary enemies on the battlefield when you take them out. Um, there might be one that we come across. You shouldn't let me get this close. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, they'll. I'm just warming up. Basically, when you kill like the leaders uh, for the other team. Enemy sighted. Ooh. Take care of them quickly. Okay, I'm going to try and shoot some guys over there if there's a, some tanks I can blow up. Uh, you know, like, you have the, these movement points that you're spending, but leaders on the other team, if you if you kill them, then they actually lose a full movement point uh, on their... That they're, that they're allowed to spend. Uh, okay, so we, we've got to get some of these Lancers up here. I've got... Two movement points left, and I could use this one to just straight up tank out this tank, but I think I'm going to do. So there's there's a case where you, you've taken out that movement point, and All right. he's psyched about it. I, dude, I agree. Uh, so I've kind of put him in a precarious position. I probably should have ran him the other way. Understood. I want to get my engineer up here because... You know, there's reason to think it was uh, a ladder. So I'm going to have him hang out back here so he doesn't get hurt. Uh, so that, there's a, a tower there, which means I can I could put my sniper up there and, and take out some dudes. Uh, that might actually not be a bad plan. We'll see what the enemy does here. And unfortunately, because I've got their tank taken out, I, I've removed a huge part of what they could possibly do to me. And that just is not going to work out well for that scout. Uh, I have found so far that the enemy is not super great at hiding behind cover and taking advantage of the, the natural options you have available to you, right? Like, why would he stand there? Like, he's going to get killed now as a result of the counterattack. Uh, and that may just be because the, the, it's really early. You know, this is, again, the second main mission, so 
they're still teaching you things like, hey, make sure you go to the base instead of sticking around and killing everyone, because you don't gain, I don't think, more experience points for killing more people. Units whose HP have reached zero fall to the ground in critical condition. You cannot be your control and using CP. Leaving a unit in the state for three turns, or allowing an enemy to touch them results in their being incapacitated. Except in very few exceptional cases, this means a soldier is dead and unable to be used again. In order to prevent this, an ally must make contact with the downed unit before the tragic end befalls them. When your unit reaches an ally in critical condition, they call the medic, who safely evacuates and restores them to health. Interesting. Alright, so... Let's do this I'm gonna go ahead and take my most powerful unit, uh, currently on the battlefield. New target sighted. Gonna occupy this territory. And then I'm also going to take out this tank. So, I mean, you're starting to get a sense of how the flow of this battle is going to go. Um, these are not actual cover points. I got a sniper up there. I might go up here. In the hopes that... Okay, I'm actually going to spend... Another movement item so that I can get her down so she has less of a chance to be hurt. I just think I'm gonna be able to do too much to that sniper up there, I don't think. This is a chance where I'm gonna actually have to get a, a proper sniper in place uh, in order to, to really do any substantial damage. Uh, in fact, I may want to go around. And this is a spot where, you know, getting my tank in place is probably gonna help quite a bit. This guy actually <laughs> might be useful. I wonder if he can hit from that distance. Hey, we're going to find out together, I guess. Okay, so that didn't that, that didn't work necessarily <laughs> how I was hoping it uh, to work out. But, uh, you know, I, I really like this game so far. I feel bad that it's coming out at a time when I'm not going to be able to dedicate a whole lot more time to it. Uh, it's, it, you know, I need to essentially shut this Enemy off decided. and then start playing, you know, Far Cry 4 and Assassin's Creed Unity and all these these other games that are sort of demanding our attention at the moment. Um, but I, I really like uh, this game. I, I, you know, a, a lot of strategy games have played with the idea of, hey, we're going to give you a chance to actually be... Uh, the units, and you know, I don't think that always works out uh, as well as they, they would like it to. I think I'm just going to spend all my movement points. Uh, maybe I should, I should try and get this uh, scout up here because uh, the scout should be capable of doing what I'm. Uh, it just, yeah, you just feel like, oh man, like I'm actually making a difference uh, in this battle, uh, which is just not always not always the case when you when you play these games. You feel kind of detached and, and cold, um, and you know that may uh, be better for the strategic element, but you know for sort of the, the the rush of emotion, like being able to line up that shot, even if it's an, uh, ends up just being a, a roll, you know, a, you know, it's just rolling a dice internally in the in the game math. I don't know. There, there's something about it, and. I, I can already tell that I'm going to adore this game, and I'm going to spend a lot of time with it. Uh, it's just a matter of me waiting uh, until that actually becomes some time that I can, that I can really get you know get down and dirty with it and uh, appreciate it for for what it is, rather than uh, just sort of I don't know looking at it and going, yeah, this game seems neat, and it totally is. But you know, it just it just comes at a time that. Uh, I can't give it the, the full appreciation, which is which is unfortunate, but uh, you know, it's, it's the way it goes. But uh, that is okay. Also, this kind of annoys me. Like, why can't I crouch in front of this? Like, this seems like this should be a valid cover point, but for whatever reason, you can't do anything with it. But that's Valkyria Chronicles. It is out on Steam now. It runs beautifully on my machine. Probably run beautifully on your machine as well. Uh, it is twenty dollars. Um, yeah, buy it. Support. Uh, good ports like this, you know, who wouldn't love to see Panzer Dragoon Saga or Shenmue or whatever? Sega has just 
really incredible library of games that are not available on the PC. Um, who wouldn't love to see Vanquish ported? I want a game with a smoking button on my PC, uh, and that is not currently the case. But you can, uh, you know, you can do your part uh, by supporting Valkyria Chronicles on Steam. And hey, if you just, you know, if you're like me, if you have followed this evolution of strategy interest, starting with XCOM, maybe getting into Fire Emblem, if that is you. This game seems right up your alley, and I can't recommend it enough. So hopefully uh, you like it as much as I have liked it so far. And that is Valkyria Chronicles. See ya.